Hi, this is Ken Zitter of Ken's Custom Iron. Today I'd like to show you some of the controls and the features of the MZ75 Power Hammer. Our MZ75 Power Hammer is unique in that we use a mechanical linkage along with a directional valve to control the hammer. Uh, everything is controlled with the treadle. So this hammer runs exactly like a steam hammer did back in the, back in the day. And what that means to you as an operator is you control everything with the treadle you are able to get uh, reciprocating blows or single blows, hard blows and soft blows. And again, it's all controlled with the treadle. So let's get started. So when you get your hammer, the first thing you need to do is hook the air up. Now I've got a three quarter inch hard line running through the shop uh, over to my hammer. And then I have a short section, two or three feet long of rubber hose that connects right up to the hammer. And this goes into a three quarter inch uh, national pipe thread fitting. Goes into the air and water separator. So this is our air and water separator. Now this takes all the moisture out of the air. Um, it, you might have to empty this once a day if the air is really humid. And to do that, all you need to do is press this little orange button at the bottom of the bowl here. Give that a push and that'll drain the water out. Okay. Then we go over to the air pressure regulator. Uh, to set this, you simply lift up the knob on top here. You can turn this either direction. Counterclockwise reduces the air pressure. Clockwise increases the air pressure. And when you have it set where you want it, simply push it down, that locks it in place. Now I usually have mine set at about 50 to 55 PSI. Then we have our lubricator this introduces oil into the system it keeps the directional valve lubricated and the cylinder lubricated um, and you can adjust that by turning this clear indicator on the top uh, turning it clockwise decreases the oil counterclockwise increases the amount of oil uh, we have it set at about three to three and a half turns from all the way in we back it out about three and a half turns. Um, so we have plenty of oil going to the machine. My hammer actually spits a little mist of oil out of the exhaust on the backside. And I have oil dripping out of my uh, directional valve because I believe an oily hammer is a happy hammer. Um, to add oil, you simply pull down on the little gray tab here and turn the bowl counterclockwise and then you can pull the bowl out and fill it with oil. You want to keep your oil in between the two marks. Now depending on how much you use your hammer, you might have to add oil to this once a week or every couple of weeks, but you want to keep your eye on the little indicators and keep it full of oil. So let's go over to the other side of the hammer now. Okay, on this side of the hammer, we have the throttle valve. Now our throttle valve has two settings, a low setting and a high setting. The first setting is the low setting. It uh, lands in a little notch right here. That's just, just enough air to basically run the hammer. And pretty much everything beyond that is wide open throttle. Now 99.9% .9 of the time I'll be running wide open. Uh, but it is nice to have that low setting for certain operations. Uh, then we move on to the cycle adjuster. Now this is something that steam hammers didn't have. But what this cycle adjuster does, you can loosen up this handle and move, the, um, move it all the way to the slow setting or to the back side of the hammer. And what that does, it makes it really easy to get uh, single blows. It's going to make it act more like a treadle hammer. It will almost be impossible to get it uh, cycling or reciprocating blows. Now when you move the uh, lever to the front side of the hammer to the fast setting it's going to be just the opposite. It'll cycle a lot easier and it'll actually hit faster and a little harder um, than in the middle. Uh, but again most of the time I'm running somewhere somewhere around the middle of the slot and it's important to note that moving this cycle adjuster in either direction an eighth of an inch can make a difference in how the hammer operates. So you really want to play around with this cycle adjuster and, and move it around and experience how it works in different positions. 
Now then we go on down to the uh, spring adjustment and the tension can be adjusted by turning this nut one way or the other to loosen or tighten the tension on the spring. Um, we have it set. Uh, you might not ever have to adjust this. You, can, you just want to make sure you don't set this too loose because it will affect the way the hammer operates. So, and again, this is something that once you set it, you'll probably never change it. As long as we're down here, let's talk about mounting the hammer. Now, this hammer needs to be bolted to the floor or to some sort of a movable base. Um, I prefer to have my hammer bolted to a separate foundation on the floor as opposed to directly to the floor of the shop. Um, they just seem to work better when they're mounted on their own separate footing. You can mount it to an optional pallet base. This, this base happens to be 40 by 40 inches square and it's an inch and a quarter thick. Uh, the footprint on the hammer itself though is 24 by 24. To move the hammer, you have a couple options for moving the hammer. We do have a pick point up here that you can hook a chain into to lift the hammer and move it around. Uh, this hammer is very simple to uh, pry up off the floor and put some rollers underneath it, some uh, half inch pipe or three quarter inch pipe or something like that. Three pieces of that, you can roll this just about anywhere. It will go in a seven foot garage door. And to do that, all you need to do is take off these two nuts Remove these two bolts up here uh, and pull those out and this top cage will come off and then it, this uh, hammer will fit through a seven foot garage door. Now this hammer weighs about a thousand pounds, but it's pretty easy to move around. I like to oil my hammer every time I use the hammer in the morning. Uh, I like get to uh, lubricate all these pivot points along here, give it a good squirt of oil, get everything oiled here. You want to make sure you oil this arm right here and make sure that you oil the linkage down at the bottom. And again, the oily hammer is a happy hammer. And then you want to use some silicone to spray the ram with. Give that a shot on all four sides. And that you might have to do, if you're using your hammer a lot, you might have to do that every 25 minutes to a half an hour or so. You can tell when the hammer starts running a little sluggish, just give it a squirt of uh, silicone. This PB blaster, you can pick this up at just about any hardware store. Uh, you want to avoid using WD-40 or motor oil. You're going, you are going to need an air compressor to run this hammer, but it doesn't need to be a really big one. Uh, when we first started doing uh, blacksmithing conferences, we were running this hammer on a horse and a half compressor with a 20 gallon tank running on a 120 volt uh, electric circuit. Uh, we've upgraded to a, a three and a half horse compressor on a 20 gallon tank and that will keep up with pretty much everything I do at blacksmithing conferences. Our main compressor in the shop here is a five horse two stage with an 80 gallon tank and that will do just about everything um, you need to do with that if you're going to be doing more production work. So you're just going to have to base your compressor size on what you think your workload is going to be. So don't be shy about giving us a call so we can discuss that. Okay, to operate this hammer, all you need to do is step on the treadle. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, slack in here where you step on the treadle and it doesn't do anything. Uh, but once you get the, the treadle moving and the ram will start coming down, you need to get the ram down about halfway. And then it's just a matter of lifting up just a little bit on the treadle and it'll start cycling on its own. Now as I step on the treadle, it'll come lower and lower until I engage my material. And then as I step on the treadle, keep pushing on the treadle, it'll hit harder and harder. It'll hit harder and harder until I reach what I call the sweet spot where you're hitting, getting the hardest blows and the longest stroke. If I keep pushing on the treadle, the first thing that'll happen is the strokes will shorten up. And if I keep pushing on the treadle, you'll get an erratic blow or two. And if I keep going with the treadle, eventually it'll just clamp. Now to get it going again, I just need to lift up a little bit on the treadle and it'll start cycling again. Now for single blows, it's just a matter of pushing on the treadle 
And with a little bit of practice, um, I can get hard blows or light blows. And that's how this hammer uh, works. I like to think it's kind of like a musical instrument. You just got to get out there and, and play it and learn how to run it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any, any questions about the power hammer, feel free to contact us or leave a comment in the comment section below. Hey, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So thanks again.